Hi, this is David with the Discount Dragon, uh, coming to you as the Dungeon Master Speaks once more. And today we are talking about a rather novel enterprise, uh, which I have devoted a lot of thought to, which is forming a new nation without military action. Um, there are, have been a lot of micro-nation projects and they've pretty much all failed in recent history. Uh, I'm going to explain how this could be accomplished uh, according to my reasoning. I find the concept quite interesting because I feel that the, that the world needs new countries, new nations forming in order to maintain its vitality and diversity of ideas. And currently, the established nations keep this from happening in almost every circumstance. Um, it is a difficult puzzle to solve. Now, in order to create and sustain a new nation, there are three main things you have to do. And these are not my rules, these are just the rules of reality and international law. One thing, you need physical territory to be acknowledged. And by physical territory, we're talking about land, physical, real land that you can stand on and claim as your own. So if you're on a floating island, doesn't count as far as nations currently acknowledge such things. If you've got something like sea land, which is an abandoned military post just kind of stuck in, stuck out in international waters, for most nations, they're not going to acknowledge that either. You need real physical territory. Next, you need the recognition, recogni recognition of other nation states in order to be acknowledged as a nation. You can call yourself a nation or a country, and if no one agrees with you, you pretty much are not as far as the world is concerned. So this is essential in the process of becoming a nation, and this is almost impossible to achieve starting from scratch. Uh, the third thing that you will need is the ability to defend your territory, or allies who will defend your territory. Because no matter where your territory is on the face of the earth, and presumably in space, if you are unable to defend your territory, it will not last. It's simply the reality of the situation. Now, at, at all three of these are nearly impossible to be achieved. Nevertheless, I have formulated a set of strategi strategies that will accomplish this goal without a vast military action on your part, because most private citizens and reasonably large groups even do not have a large military to, <laughs> to send out to try to claim territory. That's the traditional way of doing things and it's simply not an option. And even then sometimes it fails. There are large regions which have declared themselves states that are not acknowledged by the rest of the world as being legitimate countries. So even if you had a giant military to use, it still may not get you there. But it doesn't matter, because we don't have a large military. You're not going to have a large military, at least for the audience I'm speaking to. Now, the simple bare-bones version of my idea is to use the ambitions of a variety of existing pseudo-states in order to create new internationally recognized states, and then coattail onto them to drag your state into legitimacy. What that means is there are tribal, ethnic, and regional, regional uh, quasi-state-like entities, which, for all practical purposes, are countries, but nobody acknowledge them, acknowledges them as countries. Or there are ones that could be acknowledged as countries, even though they're not uh, pursuing that status. Now, if you orchestrated things properly, got a few of those tied together in an alliance and pushed them forward to become legitimate countries on the international stage and in the process got a treaty with those 
uh, incipient countries that they would recognize you in return, that could do it. The existing countries, for the most part, will never acknowledge a new nation state formed out of thin air because they have the game just where they want it. They don't want any new players on the board. They are winning the game already. So they're not going to give you the time of day. But if you go to someone who has a need, such as a ethnic minority that controls a large region, that wishes to become a state but has never achieved that, and provide an avenue for them to do that, and then do that a few, t few more times, group it together, and form an alliance with them so that you can be acknowledged at the same time, I, I think that is the way to go. Because the existing states, and unless you've got momentum, will never acknowledge you. So, uh, let's see, covered that. Uh, many of the un currently unrecognized groups would benefit greatly from statehood, and they might be willing to make these sorts of concessions. Now, in terms of territory, uh, my best thought on that is to find a region that is in dispute and essentially negotiate treaties with the warring parties in order to claim a very insignificant portion of the territory as your incipient nation state. So you need to go into a region w where things are in doubt where people are willing to negotiate and say, okay, here's what I want. It's so insignificant you wouldn't even care. And if you are able to find the leverage between the warring parties to resolve the resolution to their satisfaction, and if you can get it as a treaty or get it in writing, uh, that you will be given sovereignty within your small domain, that might do it. Now, there have been attempts to do things like build artificial islands on coral reefs to gain territory that's in nobody's country and not within national waters, and typically what happens is they go out and they kick you off anyway, because law, no law, doesn't matter. You're some crazy dude <laughs> standing on a pile of dirt in the ocean, and they're a country, and they have a military, and you have no chance. Uh, I read a book about this subject, and they sh they went over a uh, project where this guy had built a tower out in international waters, which technically you should not be able to mess with. The guy should have been home free, but Italy went out and just blew it apart. <laughs> they sent in they sent in their uh, SEAL team or whatever the Italian equivalent is, and they just dynamited. It wasn't legitimate, but it doesn't matter. If you're sitting there in a pile of rubble, it doesn't matter what legal recourse you think you've got, you're done. Uh, let's see. So, obtaining territory, I, I, I recommend trying to get it out of a conflict situation where things are already halfway gone for the country, like I've said. Uh, now, in terms of defending the country, I would recommend a few things. One is, keep the territory you're claiming very small. Uh, I watched a uh, TV show, I forget what it was, it might have been South Park, it might have been some other show, where these people were being hard sold on a timeshare. And what they'd do is they'd bring out this fancy food, like lobster and filet mignon and all this stuff, and they'd let you take one bite, and then suddenly they'd take all the food away. And they'd say, well, you know, you're not the sort of person that could afford filet mignon. You're not the sort of person that could afford lobster. But you could afford one bite. <laughs> so in other words, a country is insanely difficult to manage. It's insanely difficult to hold on to. But if you get a small amount of territory, you can concentrate your resources on it. And that's the way to go. Um... I'm recommending something not more than 10 square miles. Uh, it could be smaller, it could be larger, but in other words, keep it small. And another element of this is keep it non-threatening, which a small size also does. Now, 
uh, another thing to do that gives you security is to situate it within the borders of an existing state. So you've got a friendly state that you've negotiated this territory with, and you don't like stick your stuff on the border, you stick it in right here in the center or somewhere in the like bulk of the nation, and that gives you a huge buffer, and then you're not defending your own borders. And of course, work to develop your newfound economy as rapidly as humanly possible so you can get some cash to start defending your country, because that's the only way you're guaranteed to make it work. Now, let's see. Um, sea land is probably the most successful uh, micronation that's out there, but it's just a novelty, and pretty much all of the ones that are out there are just an incomplete joke or just an aberration that everybody ignores. So we're going to have to do this a different way, and this is the strategy I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Covered that, kind of free form rather than going through the script here. Uh, creating or or fun or sorry, creating or finding your own undetermined ter unclaimed territory is a fair, not conf confrontational strategy. You can try to find a new island sitting somewhere that's undiscovered. Probably won't because we've got GPS now. But if you did, it doesn't matter. They, they will still walk over and say, that's our territory. It, it simply will not work on the international stage. You have to get something carved out of existing territory because otherwise it won't stick. Somebody will just come and shove you off of it because you're the little kid, they're the big kid, and that's the way it works. Uh, I've put a lot of time into the problem, and this is the best solution I have come up with. Uh, create an alliance, get the Inter United Nations of Misfit Toys, <laughs> and uh, basically push them forward so that they gain legitimacy and take you with them. Uh, in terms of the territory, you need a fluid area that's in dispute, because then people are willing to make concessions in order to regain stability. And in terms of defense, keep, keep situate yourself with a big buffer, keep it small so it's easy to defend, and of course have allies. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, there are of course endless details and other issues, other subsidiary issues to deal with. I'm not going to, and of course this is a dangerous enterprise from the get-go. Uh, I will not be covering any of this, because this video would get way too long, plus I don't expect anybody to take this subject truly seriously, except for me. So, whatever country you live in, I wish you well, and until next time, this is the Discount Dragon. See you later.